Good morning, everyone. This is Heather with Murray's Home for Wayward Chickens, and we've got Naughty Taylor here. Um, we had the vet out yesterday to take a look at a few different chickens. One of the issues that we're having in general, and the vet said she's seeing everyone experience, is chickens are getting sick because the temperature hasn't been consistent. Um, Chickens are very cold hardy. They're normally a lot of breeds are very cold hardy, some more than others. But the problem that we're having this year is that the weather hasn't been consistently cold or consistently warm. We've had some freezing temperatures down to negative 15, negative 20, uh, but we've had weather in the 50s. And that, that's the part that isn't good for the chickens because they can't, um, what did she call it? Oh my gosh, it just, my mind just went blank. It was like, um, they can't regulate their temperature. So as long as the chickens go through the summer, fall, and then by the time the winter comes, like all animals, they get an extra coat, they get, you know, they put on some weight for the winter. Chickens will get used to the cold as it, you know, slowly comes into winter. And then they're better that way. But when you have the temperature going up, and then going back down, and going back up, and going back down, they can't regulate their body temperature and that's when illness sets in so one of the illnesses that we're dealing with and i'm going to try to get through this one without being emotional because we have a lot of experience with mycoplasma mycoplasma is an upper respiratory infection and it can show symptoms and signs in various ways but for the most part your chicken's going to struggle to breathe so a lot of our chickens have mycoplasma. They come to us with mycoplasma. So we have separate coops. We have two distinct um, flocks, I should say. So we have the rehab flock, and they're out in the barn coop. Uh, they came to us whether they were sick or injured. They've been rehabbed. They can acclimate. They're out in the flock, in the, in the barn. Then we have the new special needs coop that I built over the summer that stays in the yard. We keep those two flocks separate because... Those are the ones that are, they're either too small or the roosts are so big, we can't put those little tiny roosts, little tiny chickens in with him. He'll, he'll just jump in on them. He'll, he'll hurt them. So we have the special needs coop. And then we have like our laundry room has a perch and is set up. That's like the infirmary. So when someone is sick or injured, they'll spend time in the laundry room because there's a door to the outside and they can come and go separately. So when we have... Um, chickens that come to us sick, a lot of times it tends to be mycoplasma, which is why when you get new chickens, you don't want to put them with your flock immediately. It's really important to quarantine chickens for at minimum two weeks. I know uh, one girl, you know, our, our chicken friend Robin, she quarantines hers for a month. If you have the capacity to do so, that's even better, but at least two weeks. You want to see what signs and symptoms the chicken shows up with if they've been exposed to something prior to you getting them. The chickens from the stores and the breeders, you don't know what they've been exposed to. So when it comes to mycoplasma, it's an upper respiratory infection. And its first indication is usually that the chicken can't breathe. They'll wheeze. Um, it starts out very low. They'll have a very quiet wheeze or they'll be raspy. If you're holding them and they sound phlegmy, like if you're listening to them and you're hugging them and all of a sudden you hear like, Phlegm, it could be mycoplasma. It doesn't mean it has to be, but there aren't too many other things that it's going to be. And mycoplasma is transmitted from wild birds as well. It is extremely contagious. And unfortunately, there is no cure for mycoplasma. So you treat them, it's treatable. Some chickens are carriers for mycoplasma. And they never show signs of being sick. But if being a carrier, they may at some point have a flare-up and make the other chickens exposed to it. And the other chickens will get it. Now, we've had a couple of chickens show up with really bad eye infections where their eyes had swollen shut and were bulging. We had the little Roo. Little Roo had that. That was a different um, symptom of mycoplasma. Eventually, this, we got the eyes. So the two cochins, we, we had three cochins, and then we had little Roo who was a coaching bantam rooster. And one of the coachins didn't make it. The other two coachins are doing very well right now. Their eye infections were treated. The respiratory issues went away. That doesn't mean they don't have mycoplasma. It means that they're just not having a flare-up right now. It sort of goes into remission. 
Um, little Rue didn't make it either. It was a struggle to get his eyes, eye infection under control, and we did get it. It was, it was cured, cleared, and it came back with a vengeance. He actually lost the vision in one of his eyes, and then he had one eye, and you know he ran around like a rooster with one eye. But his respiratory infection came back, and he struggled to breathe. And there's only so much you can do. So we have them currently. So the sad part that I try not to get emotional about is that a few weeks ago, Taylor started closing her eyes just one at a time. She was closing one eye, and I said, you know, this is when I say pay attention to your chickens because anything that's out of the ordinary will tell you that there's something going on, even if it's not the normal blatant indications of illness, like a comb or floppiness or anything like that. She was sleeping during the day. She was napping and she's normally very energetic. I noticed she had one eye closed and then later on she'd switch and when I kept watching it and I knew something was wrong and we got in touch with the vet. Then she had both eyes closed. She wasn't, she was walking around with her eyes closed. She wouldn't open them. And when she did open them, she was squinting I looked up everything it could be because I didn't want it to be, well, we know it's mycoplasma. So we were using, um, we have an ophthalmolic ointment from the vet. It's a prescription. I'll have to get the tube so I can give you the name of it. But you can also use triple antibiotic ointment without pain relief. It sounds mean, but when you want to put it in your chicken's eyes, you don't want to use the one with pain relief because it will burn. So triple antibiotic ointment. We use the Equate Walmart brand. I buy the double tube box. We keep tubes and tubes of that. We use that for everything. So the triple antibiotic ointment you can put in their eyes if they have it. Uh, Oxitet is the tetracycline water um, that we give them. They're all on it. Everyone's on it now. When one has it, they're all going to get it. So we treat them all. It goes in their water for a week. Um, and then in some cases, if it gets really bad, and the chicken is, is in respiratory distress and can't breathe. Thailand is um, a medication you have to buy it online. It's not available in tractor supply. Thailand, T-Y-L-A-N. Thailand is a great, it's like an antibiotic. The thing is, Thailand is either going to work within two minutes and your chicken makes a miraculous recovery within two minutes and you keep giving them doses for a few days or however long the, the instructions give you or it's not going to do anything because it's too late. So you're going to know immediately when you give them Thailand. Within 15 minutes, if the chicken looks better, you have a really great chance of getting that bout of mycoplasma under control and extending the chicken's life. It's, mycoplasma is a death sentence. They're going, they're going to die. It's just a matter of, you know, it's just a matter of how long. And if they're healthy, they can go a long time. So Lola... I tell you guys, we have Lola is the sneezing chicken. She's the sneezing hen. Lola came to us a year and a half ago. She has had no other symptom. She has no respiratory distress, no breathing issues, but she sneezes incessantly. I have, um, I post videos of her sneezing. She sneezes every, it's really, it's annoying probably for her. She sneezes to the point where she blows phlegm all over her head and I'm constantly wiping her head off. She sneezes a lot less at night when she's sleeping, but she still sneezes all throughout the night. That is her only symptom, luckily. And we've had her for over a year. She hasn't needed to be treated for anything. We did confirm that it's not allergies. We gave her children's Benadryl and it didn't do anything. I was hoping it was allergies. It's another version of mycoplasma. Some birds are not affected. Some birds are affected regularly and they just can't shake it. It's always gonna be there once they have it. It's just a matter of how long they have. So Taylor now has her eyes open more so than she did and there's no swelling. Her weight is very good. The vet was super impressed with how she looked, but we know that unfortunately, there's, it's, not, it's not anything that we can ever completely eradicate. We can put it into remission. So hang on a second, I'm gonna hit Polly. So now we have Polly, and I have mentioned in several videos that Polly's vision is deteriorating and more quickly now than it did when we first got her. Polly came to us where she could see shadows and she could distinctly see shadows and she got around just fine. And I've watched it slowly, her vision slowly deteriorate over the last year or so that we've had her. She's had no other issues or indication that she had anything else. 
Um, but I've watched her vision get really bad recently, fast. And so she can't see much of anything anymore. She did lose a little weight. And I know that the reason she lost weight, because I pay attention to her actions and her habits, she couldn't find the food dish. Now, we had already given her a food dish that was elevated, like on a pedestal. And we put her water dish up on a little platform so that she can more easily get to the food and water. She can't, she has no depth perception. And so when the vet was out yesterday, she did confirm that Polly has cataracts. She can see the cataracts in her eyes. There isn't anything that can be done for it. Um, she's not uncomfortable. We just were giving her polyvisol because the extra vitamins are going to help her while she's not getting as much food. We give her eggs. Eggs are just a great all around food to give chickens when they're not feeling well. It's like a perfect food. And so, um, Polly sneezed a few times. No chicken that we have has ever sneezed other than Lola. And Lola is out in the coop, in the big coop in the barn. Polly's in the house. She does spend time with the special needs chickens in the, in the yard. She's not exposed to Lola. Lola decided to come in and move her home the other day. We couldn't find Lola. I had to sit in the dark and listen for her to sneeze to find her. She was in the special needs coop up on the perch. So she relocated herself. And now Polly's sneezing. So Polly was already feeling weak because her, her weight's down a little bit due to her vision deteriorating in the cataract. And the weather going up and down and her not being able to regulate her body temperature may have allowed her to become susceptible. And she sneezed. And yesterday, she was gaping. And when they're gaping, that's not the same as gape worm. It looks similar. But when your chicken, when your chicken is gaping because of gape worm, the mouth is like, you know, they, they're doing... But you can see the difference between that type of gaping and when a chicken can't breathe. You'll hear it. It's like, <gasps> when they do that, <laughs> you okay? When they do, okay. Oh, 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 she fell. I'm so sorry, baby. Oh, 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 hold on a second. I'm so sorry. I tried not to interfere where she regained her balance and it didn't work. So... So Polly's on Oxitat water, and we were actually told because she was gaping, we have to give her Thailand. So she got Thailand last night, and we have to watch and monitor everybody. We have needed to, on the rarest of occasions, when there's no other option. Hey, stop. When there's no other option, and the chicken is suffering and can't breathe, and you've exhausted your resources, we have had to cull, we've had to have put some chickens down. Um, in fact, little Rue had to be put down and, um, we've had a few others. We don't do that unless there's no other option. If we've exhausted all resources and it, the chicken can't breathe, we're, we're not here to watch them suffer either. And so I just, I get emotional thinking about Taylor and Polly. I mean, all of them, but Taylor and Polly. <laughs> anyway, those, that's pretty much. Mycoplasma. There is also another medication called LA-200. So LA-200 and Thailand. I think Thailand is easier to get. You can give them concurrently because LA-200, I believe, is the, is the same thing as the Oxitet. You mix it uh, like it's, it's a teaspoon that goes in a gallon of water. It's sort of yellowish orange. And they just drink all out of the same water dish that has the antibiotic in it for like 7 to 10 days. And you'll see an improvement if you have Mycoplasma. It is super contagious. If you do have a chicken that shows symptoms of it, you should quarantine them from the rest of the, of the flock. They've probably already been exposed to it. That doesn't mean that they've already given it to somebody. So it's still important to quarantine them while they have um, a flare-up. Maybe you can put them back together afterwards. That's, a, that's, that's up to you. But if you guys have any questions or comments, um, please feel free to leave them. Um, if you want to hit the like or subscribe button, we would be happy to do that too. Polly says, I'm sorry, Polly, I made you fall down or I let you fall down. Um, that's it. Have a great day. Thank you.